Hey everybody, welcome back to Grognard's Corner, the original Grognard himself sitting here. We're back at the computer again because, uh, really, this is how, and how I wanted to do the next game. And give everybody a little bit of exposure to a, a gaming platform that I use called Sun Tzu. Some of you may have heard it. Uh, it's kind of like Vassal. I'll be getting into that in a little bit. Um, first of all, I did want to give out a huge shout out uh, to uh, Stuart and uh, Stuart is a viewer and he uh, how do I put this decided he needed to downsize some of his uh, some of his games because uh, his work he's a uh, translator and editor for uh, East Front uh, Russian Eastern Front uh, uh, historical books and uh, it actually has quite an impressive library. I'll, uh, I'll I'll put the link up on Amazon for all the works that he's uh, all the books that he's done work on. Um, and he decided he needed to downsize some of his games and wanted to go ahead and donate uh, donate something to uh, Grognard's Quarter. I said, well, yeah, sure, of course. You know, I'm, not, I'm never going to turn down donations. I said, okay, well, I got a copy of The Hunters. It's uh, it's in cellophane, sealed. That I just I probably will never get to, and you probably will. Be will. So he sent it off to me, and, you know, I thought that was great. You know, hey, I'm, who am I to turn down uh, donations and, and, and free stuff? Um, and so he, he mailed it off to me, and uh, the roommate answered the door, and uh, she put the box down to my desk, next to my desk, and said, you know, this is, this is kind of a heavy box. And I was involved in the middle of something, so, you know, I wasn't paying too much attention. Like, yeah, okay. Uh, a few minutes later, when I looked down at the box, I was like, wow, that is kind of a big box. And I picked it up, and I was like, wow, this is kind of a heavy box. I didn't think the Hunters was that big of a game. I mean, I, I, you know, I was pretty sure it was smaller than Silent Victory. Uh, didn't think it was that big of a box. And, and so I opened it up, and as promised, was the Hunters from Consim World. Second printing, so it's got all the updated stuff. German U-boats at war, 1939-43. Game I've definitely had an interest in wanting to pick up for a very long time. Uh, I just have never had the finances to be able to do it, so I've got it now. And yes, we will probably be seeing this on the table at some point soon. But I was also a little bit surprised when that wasn't the only thing in the box. What else was in the box? Ah, this is what made the box so heavy. He also kind, kindly and most graciously sent along Fleet Commander Nimitz. Here's a big box. This is what was so heavy. Um, another game that I have definitely had an interest in. I've always loved DVG games. Uh, I own the original Thunderbolt Apache Leader, and we may be seeing that played at some point as well. Uh, I haven't had a chance to get too many of the, 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 haven't gotten a chance to get the remakes Phantom Leader and all the other ones that uh, GMT used to put out years ago. Uh, but I've always loved the concept of them, and they're good, solitaire games, and I'm really intrigued by Tiger Leader, uh, and that kind of, you know, kind of re-peaked my interest in the DVG stuff. So, Mr. Stewart? Thank you very much. Uh, I do appreciate these. These will get played. And if you notice, I haven't t haven't cracked the cellophane on them yet, because if I crack the cellophane on them, then I'm probably going to spend the next two weeks going through them, clipping corners, all that other good stuff, and not actually recording the next video series. Um, but again, I will definitely put the link to his uh, his his books that he has for sale on Amazon, and everybody should go check them out if you're an Eastern Front fan. I was really impressed with some of the titles that he's got. Uh, again, he's an editor and a translator. Um, go check out his book collection. Well, not his book collection, but his books and what he's done. And buy a couple copies if you can afford it. They look really good. So, anyways, uh, enough of that. Go, go ahead and move on to... This is Sun Tzu. Uh, and like I said, a few of you may have heard of Sun Tzu before. It's, it was originally uh, programmed and, and designed and developed in France. Um, so, And the English translation for most of the documentation is pretty good. Uh, it's sunsu.com. That I will be including in the comments section as well. I think you need to have Internet Explorer to download the program itself, maybe... Oh, Windows 10, it's what, Edge or whatever internet 
on Windows 10 may work as well. Um, it's, it's a very tiny, tiny background, pro or not even a background program, but a tiny program, smaller than Vassal. Um, I like it for the sheer fact that I can actually program this and do up my own game boxes for it. I've done about 20 of them. And, you know, I've done stuff that you just couldn't find in Vassal. Although there, I've did a couple of them that are in Vassal, but I just did it for my own edification. My own, uh, my own, uh, my own narcissistic self-ability to say, yes, I did that myself. A little narcissistic demon on my shoulder every once in a while. Um, it does not have all the bells and whistles of Vassal. I mean, it is, it is really, really basic. As long as you can get a JPEG of the maps and the counters, then you can pretty much really easily program Sun Tzu for what you want. Um, unlike Vassal, the counters do not click to a hex. Basically, the map is just a background, so if you want them in a hex, you have to specifically put them in a hex. So it's sometimes a little bit easy to, you know, get the get the counters a little bit out of the hex. Um, it can you can do multiplayer with it. It's got this uh, ability up here for you to have video camera and your volume. I've never done it. Uh, I've never done uh, Sun Tzu against another person. Mainly, I got this because it's a good way for a solitaire player to play his games if you're willing to put in a little bit of work to craft up a module. The first module I did was an old metagames concepts game called Ice War. And I think it took me about three and a half, four hours the first night that I sat down and actually started working with and programming it and opening up other files to other games to see exactly how things worked. Um, so yeah, you know, it didn't take me very long. Uh, I started getting to the point where you know I, I could, if I had the JPEGs of everything I needed, I could crank out a game box in a night. I did Panzer Leader and Panzer Leader 1940, and that proved to be a real difficult pain in the ass because one thing Sun Tzu does not do is modular boards. So it's not like you, not like Vassal, where you can take the different boards, put them anywhere you want to. I had to actually physically go in. Photoshop each map for each scenario and then make it its own scenario file and uh, let's go ahead uh, yeah you've got your library I've only got a couple three games in here not not all my games but you've got you, these are the available game boxes I've got loaded right now um, but you've also got in each one of them you know whatever scenarios the designer wants to wants to put together so I had to make all of these had to do the maps in Photoshop by myself. I mean, it took me, oh God, probably two weeks to do, to put these two modules together. And mainly because it was, you know, having to go in and Photoshop all the map boards. I, I originally planned on wanting to do uh, Panzer Blitz, give this same treatment to Panzer Blitz, but after I got done with these, this was 30 maps I had to go through and, and Photoshop all together and everything. I just I got burned out. And this is actually probably the last. I haven't worked with Sun Tzu uh, in a long time. Uh, uh, Sharp-eyed viewers of you may notice that these are not official Panzer Leader boards. Why, these these are green. These these aren't white. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I, I went ahead and uh, and and ripped the uh, well, not ripped, but uh, grabbed the digital down the digital boards from Imaginative Strategist uh, for the boards, just because I think these boards look better. I, I, one of my one of my viewers when I was promoing this asked, "Well, why didn't you do the same thing with the counters?" And I was really contemplating doing it, but and I probably should have because if you look. The, the 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 graphics the resolution for the counters I have it's 150 dpi it's okay when you're zoomed in real close but you start to pull away and you kind of lose some of the resolution whereas the map is in 300 dpi and I could have gotten the the newer counters the 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 the, the counters that imaginative strategists have done uh, in 300 dpi but he's done a huge huge numbers of them and I didn't want to go through and try to find which pages I would need, and it's 
And like I said, I originally did this just for my own edification. I had never planned on sharing this with anybody. You know, this was just for me so I could muck around, so I could do something on the computer, so I wouldn't have to set up something on the table, leave it set up while I played it. Because a lot of the stuff I, I do on Sun Tzu or Vassal, I'll do a turn or two, and then I may not get back to it for two or three weeks. So <laughs> it's just the way I play. Um, and some of you sharp-eyed viewers may notice, hmm, Panzerkampfwagen 4. It's not the stats for the Panzerkampfwagen 4. And what's this German 2281 infantry in 37 millimeter? We are looking at the 1940 expansion that came out in Avalon Hill in 1978. And I do not remember the author's name. But this is the 1940 uh, version. Uh, that I do have a copy of the general magazine for. So where is it? All right, it's a reprint of it, but it's a reprint from uh, Avalon Hill. And the funny thing is, uh, I have not touched really Panzer Leader at all since high school. And even back then we were playing it wrong, so we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, right, right after I got out of the service, uh, you know, when I got all my games back and sold off a lot of the stuff... Somehow I, I, I had ordered the, the 1940 counters because I didn't have it originally when I ordered the, uh, uh, the variant magazine from, uh, from the general when I was in high school. And so I cracked this open to like 95, 96. And I'm going, where the hell did these 1940? I don't remember ordering the 1940 counters. But I have them. Um, so then that's one of the re one of the reasons why you sharp-eyed viewers will notice there is slight coloration differences between some of the counters. Um, so... You see, the half track is a darker. This is a lighter. Uh, it's the diff It's kind of the differentiation in color between the base Panzer Leader set and the 1940 expansion counters. Uh, and the biggest notice, biggest noticeable difference is uh, between the darker green, uh, the Panzer Leader base Panzer Leader colors, and this lighter green for the 1940 stuff. Um, and you'll, some of you historians will also know, oh, wait a minute, this is supposed to be 1940, why are there half tracks out there? Uh, they did not give you enough truck counters, and the scenario actually says use half tracks as trucks instead, so it's just a scenario thing, so don't freak out, French did not have M3 half tracks at 1940. Uh, so basically the scenario we're looking at right now is Stone, where the French 3rd DCR Xavier de Regimente, I know, I can't speak French. German, I can speak French, I can't, so I apologize if I butchered that. 3rd Armored and 3rd Mechanized hit to Guderian. Guderian? Yes, Guderian. Uh, the 10th Panzer Division at Stone on the flanks. And so the Germans get to set up first. Uh, oh, you know what, I should probably go into, if, if you're a Panzer Leader 40, and there's a good chance uh, some of you out there are a Panzer Leader player, um, Avalon Hill published, what, close to 200,000 copies of Panzer Blitz, Panzer Leader, Arab Israeli Wars, you know, an insane number of copies, there's copies floating around out there, compared to today, where, you know, GMT might publish a thousand copies of something. We've lost so much over the years. I mean, and this is one of my complaints is that, you know, 20 years down the road when, when people want to try to collect the old, the old games, the games that are out now, they're not going to be able to find them. For Avalon Hill and SPI stuff, it's pretty easy to find a lot of these old games because they were just such huge print runs. But anyways, that's a discussion and a debate for another time. Oh, and I do want to go into a little bit about Avalon Hill, a little bit of a rant. As you can see... The boards, we've got C, D, and A boards. C, D, and A. This is what the scenario calls for. And this is one of my gripes about Avalon Hill. Avalon Hill had a tendency back in the late 70s and early 80s to make everything too frigging big. The scenarios, yeah, I know. It was the time when, you know, SPI was doing Objective Moscow and Invasion USA, Campaign for North Africa. Everybody loved their big monster games and big monster scenarios. Well, you know what? Sometimes we don't want big scenarios like that and it took Avalon Hill a long time to start realizing that. But there's no need for us to have this third board down here. Germans set up on board C, French set up on boards D and A. There's no reason for the French to be set up this far back. 
it it's just a design philosophy avalon hill had to make things big their scenario was all right we want to get you and they especially did this with squad leader any of their modular boards we want to play out the move to contact which sometimes would be two or three turns of a scenario before you'd actually get to the real combat Fortunately, later, with, with the advent of ASL, they started realizing, you know, people want scenarios that they could play in two or three hours. So let's just skip the two or three move to contact when there's not real much going on and just jump right into the contact. So extraneous boards all over the place. A lot of Panzer Leader, Panzer Blitz, Arab Israeli, Squad Leader. Anything with modular boards always had extraneous boards. And, I mean, 12 turns. Really, this entire thing could probably be done in 8 to 10. But, you know, again, that was the design philosophy of Avalon Hill. And don't get me wrong, I love Avalon Hill. It's my favorite game, game company. Only two or three games of theirs exist in my top 10 games of all time, but they're still my favorite game company. I just don't like a lot of things they did. Um, so, anyways. Oh, the other thing I wanted to do. Uh, so those of you who know Panzer Leader, Panzer Blitz, know the basic rules. With Panzer Leader 1940, there were a couple, three special rules. Uh, honestly, it's not as many special rules as you'd think you'd have. The uh, the French had these little uh, Chavalier, Chavier, I don't know. Again, it's French. I mean, what the hell do I know about French? They're basically a, a, a small armored transport carrier. Um, special rule for them, they cannot tow guns they can only carry infantry so that that's one 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 special rule for panzer leader 1940 um french armor units are actually are company size not platoon size um instead of four or five vehicles like everybody else has uh, had these are these the french are are assumed to have 10 to 12 vehicles because that's how they operated. They didn't really operate in platoon strength. They went with company strength. Uh, and when a French tank unit is destroyed, you place two rec markers. I've got my rec markers all set, all set over here. Um, just to represent the, the greater number of uh, vehicles that will would be destroyed by, you know, wiping out a, a French armored unit. Um, there was one other special rule. Uh, oh yeah, French Infantry Tank Mark One and the Renault F-17. I don't think they have any FT-17s Oops, in this one. They, uh, they they have different costs for moving up slopes because evidently they had very low traction <laughs> and had trouble getting up slopes. So really, those are the only three. three there's another one, Amphibious Assault, but that's just take the Amphibious Assault rules and apply it to the Germans type thing because there's a, a sea lion scenario that they did. Um, so yeah, I think that's all. That's really all the special rules. If you get, if you ever get a chance to read over the the, the actual article itself, it makes some pretty good. Uh, the author makes some pretty good uh, insights, and it's just a really well written article of why France lost the Blitzkrieg in 1940. And basically, it comes down to him saying, "Is like well, they never they, they never had a chance. Their doctrine that they were tied to." against what the Germans had. It was just a really interesting article, really eye-opening article when I read it uh, initially several years ago. Um, so anyway, now on to the scenario itself. We have, uh, <laughs> have the Germans setting up here. Uh, they set up on board C, and the French have got to try to take uh, the village of Wilm. So all right, let's go ahead and stick some infantry in there, and let's stick a big old infantry gun. Got my artillery in the back here with some transports if they need to uh, need to bug out. I've got a truck up here. This is for the infantry gun if I have to move it. And then I've got my biggest armor unit, although I don't really know if you could call them big. The most hard-hitting. Panzer Jaeger 1s. They're in reserve. Uh, and then I've got some anti-tank guns and infantry scattered along the two main approaches that I think the French would have taken. Probably should not have set all this stuff up here in St. Athan because the French are probably just going to move down this road and this, all this crap is out of range. Even the anti-tank guns I've got over there is only going to range it too. That's the one thing you'll find out about Panzer Leader 1940. Not a lot of big numbers in it. Really short range action. Hell, let's take a look at French infantry. French infantry are a 1-2-5-1. 
<laughs> oh, very low numbers. Well, hell, even the German infantry are 228 ones. I think in uh, regular Panzer Leader, they were at 42 somethings. Been a while since I messed with regular Panzer Leader. Anyways, very low numbers. Um, so I got some Panzerkampfwagen ones uh, covering. I got some Panzerkampfwagen threes, you know, kind of in reserve. And some more Panzerwagen threes and some Panzerwagen fours, kind of covering the approaches. And the French, the French decided to go with the two. Uh, with the French, I decided to go with the two prong approach. Uh, one is going to push up this road, this board side, uh, and then the road straight into Wilne. While this you, this side, this flank is going to try to push up through all these woods. I've fought through these woods before. It's nasty to try to get through. But I also need them to tie down the Germans from shifting any units over. And I do have a small reserve of half-track infantry. And I've got a company of half-track infantry there. So that's that, plus my Panzerjägers, are about my only reserve that I've got. Um, so we're going to see how the attack rolls out uh, pushing up the left flank and then pushing kind of straight up through the middle although I do have a feeling I'm going to be moving these guys but they're probably going to get tore up because you know I was thinking secure the flank over, whoops secure the flank over here at St. Athan but then after I set up I realized you know the French are just going to not get anywhere near it so I'm going to have to move them it's going to be fun um, so yeah, I could jump into gameplay right now, but that's probably we're pushing a half hour uh, at least. I just, like I said, I just wanted to, wanted to get this get this out, kind of give a briefing on what Sun Tzu is, what it's all about, and what my idea for how the flow of the battle is going to go. Um, who's going to win? I, I'm not sure. I mean, a lot of it's going to come down to. How much infantry can stay alive getting up close because they're coming up in trucks and such. Um, French, French armor's got the advantage uh, in numbers, not necessarily in range. Because, I mean, at least, you know, we have our Panzerkampfwagen 4s here with a range of 8 compared to the, you know, these uh, Hotchkisses with a range of 2 and even. You know, the Char Bis, the B1, that's about the biggest armor unit I've got. And then there's some, you know, Model 39 Hotchkisses compared to the Model 35. So, I mean, the French armor is definitely superior, and there's more of it. French infantry is half of what the German infantry is. I mean, German attack value is 2, French attack value is 1. Defense of 8, whereas the Germans defense is, or the German defense of 8 compared to the French defense of five. So, you know, it's a good thing that the French outnumbered the Germans in infantry as well because their infantry is crap compared to it. So this is Panzer Leader in 1940. I uh, wanted to get this out real quick. I may even go ahead and after I get this recorded, jump into turn one, but we will be getting actual gameplay coming very soon. I'm not going to go through and explain the sequence this is just going to be me playing. I may stop every once in a while and explain something. Um, now, like I said, I, I have not touched this game since high school. Uh, really, have not played it at all since high school 30 years ago. And we were playing it wrong back then. So this is kind of me taking a complete new, fresh approach to this game, the way it's supposed to be played. And I know there are lots of issues with the Panzer Legion, Panzer Blitz series, you know, uh, Panzer Bush, the, the problems with the Panzer Bush rules, uh, the, the problems with the artillery. I know all of that. I'm not using any of the, those optional rules. We're just going to be playing straight out of the box Panzer Leader rules. And I'm sure that's going to, you know, annoy some old hardcore diehard Panzer Leader fans, but it is what it is. Uh, so that's what we got Panzer Leader, 1940, Stone. Third French armored and French mechanized attacking 10th Panzer Division. Should be getting more of this up relatively quickly. I'll talk to everybody later. Questions, comments, complaints, concerns, criticisms in the comment section. Hey, y'all. Uh...